I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hello everybody, blessings of the Lord be upon you. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, Friday edition of Faith Moment coming your way live. I pray and trust that all is well with you. Blessed Friday to you. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, happy Friday, happy Friday. Happy Friday to you and your loved ones. Please share the broadcast. Be a happy blessing Friday to somebody. To and your loved ones, please. All right, be a blessing to somebody. Be a blessing to somebody by sharing the broadcast. All right, share the broadcast. Like it and share. To your loved ones and faithful ones, let somebody be a share of your blessings. All right? We're going to be talking about God's Word. All right? We're talking about the Word of God. So stick with me uh, for a couple of minutes even as we do that. All right? Even as we do that. Be a blessing to somebody by sharing the broadcast. All right, today is Friday. It's Friday, and um, I know you're preparing for the weekend and uh, all that wonderful things you're planning to do. But one thing we cannot forget, we cannot forget God's Word. And how do we apply that in our life? How do we apply God's Word in our life? I want us to look into this very um, segment today that I believe will be a blessing to you by the time we are done with it you will have an understanding um, understanding will keep you brother Michael I send a shout of blessings to you please kindly like and share this broadcast to your friends and loved ones when you come on board please share it let somebody receive the blessings as well we're talking about Today, we are talking about God's Word, about God's Word, and what does it really say? What does God's Word really say? What does it really mean? What does God's Word really say, and what does it mean? How do we put it to work in our lives? Three things I want you to uh, pay attention to. What does God's Word say? When we do you hear God's Word, God's Word, God's Word, what does it say? And what does it really mean? What does God's word really mean? And how do we apply that in our life? How do we put that application of God's word in our life? And that is what we're going to be looking at and have an understanding. Bible tells you and I that understanding Proverbs chapter, chapter 2 verse 11 that understanding will keep you. When you have understanding, scripture says, they that have understanding cannot be destroyed. Understanding will keep you. So it's very important that we get understanding of God's word. And so when, we, when you hear God's word, what does it really mean? When you hear God's word, what, what, does, it, what does it say? What is God's word saying? And how do you apply that in, in your life? How do you do that? We believe the Bible is an inspired. The Bible, the Bible, we believe that was an it's an inspired word of God, the only infallible or authoritative word of God. The Bible is an authoritative word of God, inspired authoritative word of God. I'm going to be reading some stuff to you. Please make notes of this, okay, for your reading. Now, you've also probably hear that or heard that the Bible is the oldest and most important book in the world. Have you heard that before? The Bible is the oldest and most important book in the world. Please write these things down and check it. You've probably heard that before. And so we, when you hear, number one, God's word, what, what does it do to me? I, I, probably you've been asking those questions 
you know, before, what is God's word and how do I put God's word into my life? How does it work? If you don't have an understanding of it, beloved, it will not work for you. What you don't know cannot bless you. Can I say that again? What you don't know can do you no good. <laughs> I just put it in another, another form to you. What you do not know, what you do not understand can do you no good. And so you must have an understanding of God's word to put that in application in your life to see the manifestation of it. If you don't understand it, it will not do you any good. I hope you, I hope you understand what I'm saying. If you do not understand God's word, the word of God will do you no good. You see, so when we, when you hear God's word, what does it really mean? And, and what is it saying? And, and how do I apply that to my life? You've heard that the Bible is the oldest book, oldest book. And the most important book in the world is also an inspired, infallible, and the authoritative word of God. Don't forget that too. Very, very important. Now, it is important not because of the age, but its content. The Bible is not just important book of the world, not because it's the oldest book of the world. Okay, that is not what is so, so important, but the contents of it, what it carries. Well, you probably heard that, oh, well, you know, it's, it's, been, it's been transformed from the Greek to the Hebrew or the Greek or Hebrew to the Greek and to the English and, you know, as it, as it goes on the journey, it, be, it loses its, you know, value and its power and its authority, authority and all that. But beloved, whatever is down here, that we have it, we still have the power that the Bible contains. So the contents of it is the most important thing. Not even how old it has been. Look at, um, okay, Jacqueline has sent a shout of blessings to you and your house. Look at very important some uh, scenario here. Look at Second uh, Peter chapter one verse twenty one. Second Peter chapter one, the twenty one verse. Please share and like this broadcast so that somebody else can receive that blessings as well. We are talking about God's word. When you hear God's word, what 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 is what comes to what comes to mind? We have we have established that the Bible is the oldest and most important book in the world. The oldest. Write it down. And the most important book in the world. In the world. Now, it's not because it's the oldest. But the contents of it that it carries is the most important thing that I want you to pay attention to. The Bible, number one, like I said, is the oldest book, is the infallible word of God, and is the most authoritative word of God. And so when you hear the word of God, the word of God, well, the word of God brings you to the Bible. The Bible is the word of God. That's where we see what God has inspired people to put down for you and I to read it today. The contents which carry the authority, authority authoritative word of God is the most important area that you need to know and to understand. If you don't understand this, beloved Bible would mean nothing to you. If you don't understand this, the Bible will not mean nothing at all to you. And so don't be surprised when you hear some people that, oh, the Bible is this, this uh, race book. The Bible is somebody did this and all that. Well, until you know what it really means, 
what is re what it really is it really says and how to apply it in your life it would not mean nothing to you i hope you understand that if you do say amen so that is how and then you also have to understand that the bible is the oldest the oldest book in the world the oldest and most important book in the world the bible now not because of its of its age but the contents of the bible is the most important area that you need to pay attention to the contents are you listening to me so with all this being said if you do not understand this this basic the fundamentals of the bible the bible will not mean nothing to you and uh, and i'm not surprised that it doesn't mean a lot to people i'm not surprised because what you do not know cannot bless you what you do not know can do you no good what you don't understand can do you no yesterday my daughter my daughter was um, uh, she sent me a tiktok a video on uh, on her way to school and um i didn't pay attention to it in the course of the day i thought oh let me check what she sent so when i look at the video it didn't i, I didn't get it i thought wait a minute this young boy was singing about um i live in beverly hills something something now but it doesn't make it doesn't it doesn't change me or something to that effect and i'm trying to make sense out of but then there's some writings on top of you know the video which says that jesus um overturned the tables jesus overturned the tables but he is so, so the whole thing wasn't i didn't get it so when she she you know i, I pick her from school and then i was asking her you know honey what, what does this thing mean but she was trying to i mean explain explain and i still wasn't getting it we got home and she was explaining it to say mom can you can you understand this that her mother got it and i was still not getting it I, I, my 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 way of thinking about it i guess was not helping me to easily get it the way they see it you see until later on it's like oh okay that's what it means then it began to make sense to me beloved that's exactly what bible is the word of god is blessings upon you op in canada this is this is the essence of the bible if you don't understand this basic things i'm telling you bible will not make any sense to you number 1 is the oldest and the most important book in the world number 1 number 2 what what is bible saying number 3 what does it what 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 does does those mean those writings mean what what exactly does it mean number 4 how does how do i apply that in my life how does it work in my life if you don't understand this basic things here Oh, number six, <laughs> number five or six. It is the infallible word of God, and is the authoritative word of God. Beloved, if you don't, if you miss this foundation of the Bible, you will never, never understand and appreciate the word of God, which is the Bible. I hope you understand that. So we're talking today about the word. of god please share this broadcast and like it now i said let's look at second corinthians sorry second peter chapter 1 verse 21 second peter chapter 1 verse 21 now um i want you to understand to to get this now the bible it is god's word and it came to us by inspiration it is god's word that came to man by inspiration 
Okay? Look at 2 Peter 1.21. For prophecy never came by the will of man, okay? But holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. The holy men of God were inspired by the word of God, where they were moved by the Holy Spirit to put these things down for you and I to come and benefit of it. Any study of our new life in Christ must therefore begin on the foundation of this scripture. We must have this foundation. Again, you cannot build on nothing. If there's no foundation, you cannot build on it. nothing. There must be a foundation for you to build on it. These are fundamentals and the principles that we need to understand. So this way, you don't see the Bible as, you know, this it's a, it's a, a book of this race or that race or that race or that race. It is an inspired word of God to humanity. God chooses anybody to do what. First of all, you need to also understand that he is the manufacturer of beings. God is the manufacturer of human beings. He is the creator. And there is a purpose for which he created man. You need to have these basic understanding. So God created man, inspired man to put his word into this, what we call the Bible. For then you have to therefore understand that this is God's word, inspired by the Holy Spirit of God for man to come to know what is in the heart of God or what God wants you and me to understand and to know. Anything short of this will not make the Bible any sense or any, I mean, it wouldn't make any sense to you. You immediately, you hear it's like, ah, here they go again, some crazy guy talking and all that. Beloved, what you don't know cannot be a blessing to you. What you do not understand can do you no good. So don't be surprised when you hear some people making fun about the Bible or making all kinds of stuff because they have no understanding of what it is. They have no understanding of what it is. So you need to understand that. Write this down. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 21. Now, Therefore, G Christ is the center of all scriptures. Christ Jesus, don't forget that, write it down. Christ Jesus or Jesus Christ is the center of all scriptures. Jesus is the center of all scriptures. You need to understand that. When you search the, when you search the scripture, you need to understand that for in scripture, we also think of eternal life. In scripture, we also think of eternal life. In the Bible, we, th we also think of eternal life because we see that. Now, etern eternal life is also found only in Jesus Christ. Eternal life is only found in Jesus Christ. As Jesus Christ is the beginning and the foundation of scripture. You need to understand this. <coughs> Excuse me. We're trying to set up the basis. Taking my time to set the platform for your understanding and for your growth and increase. Okay, now, um, look at John chapter 5, verse 39. Look at John chapter 5, verse 39. 
Pastor Penky sent a shout of blessings to you out there in India. Look at John chapter 5, verse 39. You need to, we need to understand these things, okay? Um, the Old Testament, first of all, the Old Testament looks forward to the coming of Christ. The Old Testament looks, so now I'm bringing you, putting, bringing you to where, where we ought to be. The Old Testament, because the Bible starts from the Old Testament, as it's, it's arranged. So the Old Testament looks forward to the coming of Jesus. Then, okay, I want you to look at Luke chapter uh, 25, 24, verse 25 to 27. Look, okay, open your Bibles if you have it or write it down and check it out. Look. The 24th chapter, the 24th chapter, 25 to 27. Okay? Um, then he said, O foolish ones, how slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scripture the things concerning himself. Now, don't forget, like I said earlier, Jesus Christ is the beginning and the foundation of scripture. You see Jesus in every part of the Bible. You may you say, ah, but I don't see Jesus in the Old Testament. Yeah, he is there. He is there. If you do not, that's what I'm saying. If you don't understand God and what the relationship he has with man, you will not see these things. So you follow in tow. The New Testament, therefore, tells us. As how Christ fulfilled the law of Moses of the Old Testament and the prophets. God, who look at now, I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. Look at Hebrews chapter 1, 1 and 2. Let me read this. It says, God, who at various times and in different ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, God has spoken to us and speaking to us by his son, who is Jesus, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he, God, made the worlds. You see, are you getting the revelation here? So you see how important Jesus also plays Jesus is the foundation of all scripture. In the days of old, God spoke through the prophets. In these last days, God speaks through who? Jesus. Okay? Now, the New Testament tells how, how uh, you know, Christ um, uh, uh, Jesus fulfilled the law and the prophets. You see, very, very important for you to understand these things because if you don't, it will not benefit you. Now, Jesus Christ became the living word. Therefore, watch this. Jesus has become the living word. Look at John chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. In the beginning was the word. Huh? The word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. John chapter 1, 1 to 5. Now the Bible says of this. You see, 
The Bible says of God, watch this again, look at um, Psalms 107 verse 20. Psalms 107 verse 20. He sent his word, there you go again, word, word. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He sent his word. He sent his word. And what did you see Jesus do? Jesus is the word. And God sent his word. And he sent his word and he healed them. And deliver them from their destruction. That is what Jesus came to do. Jesus was healing the sick. Opening the blind eyes. Those who were sick he was healing them. Taking men out of the sin that leads to destruction. So Jesus is the word. Do you see that now? Okay. Now many books tell of man's search for God. Many books. Many books tells you and I, you know, man is searching for God. Man is searching for God. You know, we have lost our way. We're looking for God. And there are so many areas in which man is looking for God. Would you see that today? Some are looking for God through some water. Some are looking for God through some trees. Some are looking for God through whatever, the constellations and, and, and so many things. But only the Bible tells of God search for man. It's only the Bible that tells God's search for man. When man willfully sinned and tarnish, okay, his innocent nature, when man sinned, there was a separation between man and God. There was a separation between man and God. And therefore, man tarnished, you know, his innocent nature. God did not leave man where he deserved to be. God did not leave man where man deserves to be. Boy, I tell you, makes me feel guilty right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sometimes, you know, you, 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 you do, people do certain things and it's like, you know what, just leave them to be where they are and that kind of stuff. But you see, God, Bible shows us that God did not do that. He didn't, if God was, was had, had was if God had left man to be where man ought to be as a result of the sin, there ain't no way we could get back to him. There's no way we could get closer to him. There's no way we can pray to him. But man, but God did not leave man to be where he ought to be. You see, it's very, very important. Now, um, rather, God sought out man, desiring to reconcile, okay, to reconcile man to himself. Now, throughout all the Bible, we see God seeking man. Throughout all the Bible, we see God seeking man. And this is why I'm saying to you that, this is why I'm saying to you, that God, you see, God, I mean, you can find Jesus in every scripture from the old to the new. This is all as a result of God seeking man to be back in their right, rightful position where he is concerned. Okay where he is concerned. So it's very important that we understand this. And again, it's only in the Bible that you see God search for man. Most of the Bibles across the face of this earth, it is man searching for God. <laughs> you see, so when you hear about God's word, you must take your time 
to have an understanding about what it means, what is it about, and the, what is whatever is in there, what does that got to do with me? If you understand these three things, you will then appreciate the Bible. As we, we, we know, it's known as God's word. If you don't, beloved, it will mean nothing to you. It will mean nothing to you. And you will be missing out. Because whether you believe this or not, unless there is, you know, to, to the contrary, this is the most authoritative word, most infallible word, and the most inspired word of God, the Bible. And it is the, the oldest and the most important book of the, of, of, of the earth. You see, so there, there, there has to be some, some truth to this matter. Get that revelation here. It's very, very important. Now, God did not leave us. Rather, God sought man, desiring to, you know, reconcile to himself. Now, like I said, throughout all the Bible, we, we see God seeking man, right? Desiring to ultimately, that lead, ultimately leads to Christ on the cross of Calvary, paying the supreme price so that man could be saved. So that man could be saved. True, true. I mean, with all that said and done, you will see, you see that it brought Jesus ultimately to the cross where he ought to pay for the price of the sin of man. So that man can return. Man can return back to God. Man can return back to God. Because man, there was a separation between man and God as a result of sin. So Jesus, who is the word, can be seen throughout all scripture from Genesis to Revelation. But you must have this understanding so that you can appreciate the Bible, the word of God. You see, the Bible is God's book. I want you to know that this is God's book. Everybody writes book. I have written my books. God, this is God's book. The infallible, authoritative, inspired word of God. This, the Bible is God's book. Telling this warm and wonderful truth that man can again have fellowship with he God and have everlasting life through Jesus Christ. Oh, what an awesome thing. God, the Bible is God's word. And in it, the, 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 the central contents and the central point of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is that God had made a provision for man to come back to have a fellowship with him. And through Jesus, you can do that. That's a central point of, of, of everything. That is why you see Jesus, okay, from, Gen from Genesis until Revelation. You can find Jesus everywhere. If you only search and search well. Yes. The old world was not just about Moses. But you can find Jesus. And so therefore, therefore, Jesus, through him, man can have everlasting life. God's book contains the word 
of life. Therefore, I want you to know that the book of God, which is the Bible, the word of God, contains God's word or words of life. Life, eternal life. And that he has positioned Jesus to be the conduit. I mean, Jesus said this. He says, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one goes to the Father except through me. Why? Because he eats. For God so loved you and me. John 3, 16, you can see that there. God so loved the world which comprises you and me. He sent his only begotten son, Jesus. To come and, and, and redeem man and bring man closer to him. And therefore, whosoever believe in him, Jesus, okay, will not perish, but you will have everlasting life. You will not perish. Think about that. In other words, you will have the opposite of you being perished. You will have everlasting life. What more do you want? <laughs> what more do you want? You see, this, 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 we need to take our time to understand this so that we can come to a place of appreciating what God has done for you and for me. If we don't take our time to do this, to appreciate this, beloved, Bible will not mean nothing. The word of God will mean nothing. So let me recap this. Let me recap this. What does the Bible really mean? What does the word of God really mean? And, 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 what, what does it really say? And what does it mean to me? How does it apply in my life? All that is in the Bible, what, what, how does that apply in my life? Oh yes, it applies in your life as a descendant, whether you believe it or not. Somebody gave birth to somebody, to somebody, to somebody, to somebody, 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 to you. And there was, there was a high treason from the Genesis, <laughs> which affected mankind. But God still, 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 still love man. You know, there's a scripture that angels, the Bible says, the angels ask God, who is man that you are so mindful of? And according to scripture, we are the only species that somebody would say homo sapiens <laughs> on the face of the earth that was created in the image and in, in the likeness of God. You see, isn't that interesting that all that God created from day one until day six, according to scripture, He gave man dominion over all that. Think about that. He gave man dominion. He gave man the, the, the ability to, to be in control, to be in charge. So you see, there's, there's that, this, this envious eye of God concerning man. Mm, if I can put it that way, literally. And so God wants man. He, he, he wants that fellowship that he created man to have with him. And so he still made a way. And that is Jesus. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and life. No one goes to truth. So now when we talk about the everlasting life of God, it can only be found in Jesus. 
you see it can only be found in Jesus that is why it's important that you understand you understand that the Bible is God's book God's manual for your for you and I's daily life and living this is God's book so don't discard it just because you don't understand it because that's what you do that's what people do because you don't understand what it means and somebody told you that oh some <clears throat> some race wrote that book or whatever and all this so you discard it beloved you are harming yourself you are denying yourself you are neglecting what is so, so, so important for you. Because in it, the content, like I said, the Bible is the oldest book on the earth. But what is important is not how old it is, it's the contents of it. The contents. The Jews in it, if you will. The ingredients in it that has to do with everything concerning our lives. That's what's important. You see, and the one who has bridged a gap between you and God for us to therefore know. Look at Hebrews chapter 1 again. It says, in the, in the times of old, God spoke through the prophets. But in these last days, God has spoken through Jesus Christ to you and I. So you see that Jesus is showcased here. So when you when you, you don't understand these things and you're making fun of him and all those things, be careful. Because Jesus now is showcased here from the old to the new and all. He is a word. And that's why you have to give him your life. He is the way, the truth, and life. You have to come to him and say, Lord Jesus, therefore forgive me of my ignorance. I believe you in my heart. As my father, let's pray that prayer right now. Let's pray that prayer. Scripture tells us if we repent of our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. If any man be in Christ, you see. And so let's 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 pray that prayer right now, sincerely, out of our heart. You know you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You must do that. Because He is the only way. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. I believe you in my heart. And I confess you with my mouth. That God raised you from the dead. Lord Jesus. As of this moment. Baptize me with your spirit. Oh the Holy Spirit. To dwell with me and to live in me. To help me to fulfill God's purposes on earth according to his will for my life. Lord Jesus, I thank you for paying the price of sin, of my son, and bringing me to the place of righteousness. I thank you. Jesus, in your name I pray. Amen and amen. Beloved, if you pray that short prayer sincerely out of your heart, God who sees the heart of man has seen your sincerity and he has accepted you. Don't, don't doubt that. Don't doubt that. You see, all you have to do is believe and not doubt. Believe. Doubt will not do you nothing but 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 deny you of all that you have to receive from God. You see, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, tells us that without faith, 
It's impossible to please God. You see, and those who come to him must even first believe, believe, not doubt. you got to believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So you must believe. You see, you must believe. Believe it today. Well, I want to thank you for making time. It's my prayer and sincere hope that you have understand something today and you have received Jesus who is the ultimate passage to God and to have everlasting life with him. So receive him now. Now, if you do not have the word of God, the Bible, God's book, please request one from us. We will send one to you free of charge. Yes, we will send one to you free of charge. Okay, you can do that through our website. Go to the website. There's a place where you can see that, you know, request for a Bible or put some your information there and we'll get to you. All right. The address is www.patrickquaino, Q-U-A-I-N-O-O, Quaino, Patrick Quaino, Global Ministries, Patrick Quaino, Global Ministries, dot org, dot org. Let me repeat it again. www.patrickquainoglobalministries.org Send or send a request for a Bible if you don't have one. God's word, God's book will send you will send one to you free of charge. Okay. I also want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to YouTube, same name Patrick Quino, Patrick Quino Ministries, and click the word that says subscribe. This you can get when you do that. You can get this message among other messages that will increase your understanding and increase your faith and kill your doubt to death you see very very important so go to the youtube and subscribe to our ministry here when you get to the website there's a lot of information there for your increase for your knowing you know a little bit about us it will be a blessing okay and um share this with your loved ones and friends and uh, invite them as well tell them about this ministry and uh, be a blessing to somebody that is all we have for you today i thank you for making time with me today and as always please like and share please like it and share it on the youtube on the facebook everywhere like it and share it be a blessing okay put it on your platforms and all that enjoy your weekend enjoy the friends and the ones you love and i will see you soon and that's why I always tell you that you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all you're getting, get understanding. I'll see you soon. God bless you.